Hi everyone. In this session we're going to start having a look at auto paint in the desktop paint module of Flame and Smoke. Normally when working inside of paint using the regular canvas tools we usually are painting on one frame at a time. The auto paint tool allows you to animate your paint strokes over a sequence of frames. You do have lots of different options within auto paint and we're going to try and touch on as many as possible within the blog and this will hopefully get you started to see how versatile this tool can be even inside of a regular painting environment. In previous blogs I've mentioned a few little things about auto paint but just to recap you've actually got three modes. You have the white mode, this essentially takes your brush and wipes it across the screen using the auto paint tools. You've got a random tool, this essentially allows you to set amount of samples and with these samples when you click on the screen it will randomly apply them to your image and third and final you've got your user controls and this is the most flexible part of auto paint where it allows you to completely customize your brush strokes. We're going to come back to this in a minute but I just want to go back and just speak a little bit about how the processing of auto paint works. Normally when you paint a stroke using the regular canvas tools there's no need to process it's instant as you draw. However with auto paint because it paints on every single frame you essentially set up your auto paint tools as you're going to use them and then when you hit process it then processes your result and draws your strokes or your wipes across the screen. This will become more evident as we start going deeper into auto paint. So the tools we're going to start off with is first of all wipe. Wipe essentially takes your strokes and basically brushes it across the screen. This is all dependent on the way your brush attributes are set up, your paint modes, your washes, your fills, everything the way that the controls are set up here will be applied through the wipe tool. The same thing goes for random. So the random and wipe tools can be used to do things like create textures, create looks, feels and designs on your image but it is applying across the whole image. The user tools allow you to really customize and control the way your brush strokes are being applied to the image. This means you can do something very simple. So for example the way we use auto paint is to set the mode to user and set the option to record. When the system is in record mode anything I do on the screen will actually be recorded. As I draw the stroke, the first stroke I've created, the system actually records the strokes and it tells me that it's recorded in this case 400 points out of a maximum of a very large value. I can continue to stroke and paint and every single time that I keep drawing the system will remember the strokes that I'm creating. So with the first basic stroke if I'm happy with what I've created I hit the play button. By pressing the play button it tells me that it commits that paint stroke into memory and it's now ready to go. The paint stroke does disappear off the interface and the reason for this is because you can now go ahead and change the brush attributes and paint modes if that is your requirement. You also get a second paint bar down here at the bottom of the screen. This indicates paint strokes over time. In order for us to see how this works what you need to do is under user or next to user switch to animation and enable the wireframe. This is not a necessary step but it does help you see exactly how your stroke is going to be drawn. So when wireframe is turned on you'll notice the red is the actual path of the stroke and the blue is where the stroke is actually drawn. So you can see how we've actually got a stroke that will grow itself over time. So in this case looking at the second time bar you can see that we've got the stroke starting at frame 1 and finishing at frame 30. If I wanted the stroke say for example to only be 15 frames in length we can simply just grab the actual bar and decrease the length. So you can see now it will draw over the first 15 frames and then the last frame the brush stroke will stay on the screen the entire time. Similarly you could grab the middle bar and have the brush stroke only starting to paint at 15 frames in and finishing at frame 30. You can see that there's lots of different options that you've got to adjust them and each one has a specific purpose. So for the simple process of drawing a stroke on the screen we've got our wireframe set up. In the brush tools themselves these are the default settings. I have to be on frame 1 because I'm going to process this and when I hit process the system will go ahead and paint that brush stroke. So very quickly you can see how my brush stroke has been created. Now the system will always remember the brush stroke in memory during the current paint session that you're inside. So for example once we've painted this that paint stroke is now committed on a clip. You could for example go into the brush tools by turning off animation and choose a different brush with a different color perhaps with a different size and if I go to the frame 1 and I hit process again you will see that it will then paint that stroke on top of the next stroke. So you can actually make multiple compound strokes and literally just brush them over and over and over again. 
So this is the basic premise of how AutoPaint works in its most simplified form. Now you do have a few options as to the way your strokes are created. So let's go ahead and have a look at how these can be applied. If I was to switch back to user this time, and this time I was to draw, let's say three strokes, you can see the system is recording the strokes and it's recording all three for me. If I hit play, the system tells me it's recorded three strokes over 30 frames. Once again, go to animation and turn on wireframe. You now get this view here. If I was just to drag it across in time, you'll see that the system will paint one stroke at a time. This is how it recorded my brush stroke. However, you can actually control the way the strokes are being painted on the screen. Down underneath the options, you'll see that you've got an option here called backward. If you turn backward on, you'll see the strokes are now blue. And then as time goes forward, they go red. This means they will start off drawn on the screen and eventually erase themselves or go backwards. The second option you have here is the stroke option. When I drag this through, you'll see that even though I painted each stroke separately, it's now applying them all simultaneously. This is very useful if I want something to animate or grow simultaneously and I've used lots of paint strokes to create that effect. The other option you have here is something called part. And what part does is it basically creates a partial stroke. So if I was to process this result, you can see there that it's now created a partial stroke based on the options I've chosen. The last one is an interesting one. The other option you have here is called distance. What distance basically does is distance looks exactly the same as the regular option when none of those are selected. The only difference is, is if I'm drawing multiple strokes, the strokes without distance enabled will be applied at different speeds. So if I've drawn a very short stroke, if I've drawn a very long one, the speeds may differ depending on the time. When distance is turned on, it means that every stroke has been calculated to be happening at the same time. So the speed of which the stroke is being applied is consistent. So if I hit process on this, we'll see that the stroke for each one, even though one line might be shorter than the other, is consistent. So this is really handy. So now looking at this, this could be used very nicely for motion graphics that might be growing. So far, you've seen me do everything using the user tool, and I've been manually painting things on the screen. However, if I wanted to draw a straight line, let's say I need to do a circle or something like that, you'll notice that I haven't exactly got the most accurate hands. So this is something that we may need to do in a digital environment. So with a tool that can do it. So one of the things we can do instead of trying to, you know, get the perfect line by possibly putting a ruler on the tablet is actually to go over to the graphics tool. Inside the graphics tool, you've got these graphical shapes. So say, for example, I was to choose a circle and I choose my circle over here. You can see the circle that we've got being created and I simply hit the convert option. When I choose the convert option in the edit mode, what this does is if I now return back to the painting tools and I go to auto paint, we simply choose user. We hit play and then I'm going to turn on animation and press wireframe. And as you can see, that geometry that I created has instantly been converted into an auto paint stroke. This is extremely useful if I want to make graphics that are very accurate and obviously very, very clean. If I take this and process this, presto, I've now got my circle. So you can see just how useful this can be at creating these graphics. They don't have to be completely hand drawn. They can be used using the geometries as well. Some of the other things that are worth pointing out here. If I turn the wireframe back on, you can see how my wireframe is being applied. And one of the things about the wireframe itself is that it is a movable object. So what I mean by this is you can come, let's say, to the first frame and you can adjust the position of the wireframe. So I could position here over to the side. You can then see how it will draw itself there. If I then process this again, it will reprocess itself over again. So very simply, I've just reused the same wireframe brushstroke that I've created, and you can see how that's being applied. Similarly, if we were to take this and let's say put it over to the other side, you can see this is what we're going to get. So I can accurately position where I want my motion graphic strokes to be. And then from that, once again, I simply hit process and I've now created a motion graphic. You could paint your paint strokes over black. These then can be produced out as alpha channels with mats, and these elements can then be recomposited inside of action. So you can see the type of flexibility you have just by bringing paint in as a graphic creation tool using the auto paint strokes. There are a few other options that we do need to address and have a look at. So let's go ahead once again 
and go back into the paint tool and I'll reset it one more time so you can see what we're going to do. In the user mode, you have got a few things that you can do. So one of the things you've got here is you do have the ability to actually animate your brush strokes over time. So I will simply just draw a brush stroke freehand on the screen. So it records that stroke and I just hit play and it's now recorded my stroke and this is going to draw itself over time. Once again, I've turned on animation, I've turned on wireframe and I can see how the stroke is being drawn. With animation enabled, and animation has to be enabled, on the first frame I'm going to start off with a size of 5 on my brush and then towards the end we're just going to grow that brush, let's say to about 100. So you can see here that I've animated my brush over time. If I need to get to any of these animated properties, when animation is turned on you simply swipe down and you actually get the animation curves for auto paint. So everything from the actual brush size to the brush attributes, these tools can actually be tweaked and fine-tuned by going to those curves. You will only have access to these animation curves when you're inside the animation menu. So let's go ahead and uh, process this. So if I process this, you can see the stroke being drawn. Now it might not be something that you'd normally expect. Normally I'd expect the brush to start off small and grow. However, it's doing this to the entire stroke. This is one mode in which you can work. So in this case, you can actually see how the stroke entirely grows over time. So it's growing per frame. This is being influenced by a control here called frame. And what the frame does is it basically draws the exact same stroke over every frame, but as the brush size grows, it obviously redraws it with a different size brush. You can similarly set this option to another mode called path. And path will basically analyze every single frame that's being drawn, and as the frames are being drawn, it will then animate the brush size growing up. This is a slower rendering process because it's got to analyze every single frame, but you'll see the result. Now to see it being compared against the other one, I'm going to take the Y frame and just use the Y position to position it underneath. So you can see that's what we're going to get. Once again, I'm going to process this and it will be slightly slow in the processing speed, but you can see the exact difference we're getting. So if I wanted to create strokes that change shape or grew or change properties over time, you can see the difference between using the frame option versus using the path option. So these are very handy things that you can do here in AutoPaint as well. Now, AutoPaint, as you've seen, can be used to do graphical work, but one of the other things I'm going to show you is how you can use AutoPaint to actually clean things up. So what I've got here is just a shot from a commercial called Heisman, and uh, let's say in this particular case what we'd like to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and remove a logo off one of the player's helmets. So this could be a job that could be done inside of Action. It also could be a job that's done inside of Paint. So let's go ahead and take this into the Paint tool. Inside here, I'll just reset the Paint tool once more, and you can see we've got 66 frames of painting to do. If I just zoom in, we have a close look at his helmet, you can see that we can maybe get rid of the logo just above where the helmet is uh, positioned here, so we can get above where the railing is on his grill. So I want to go ahead and get rid of this little section over here. We're going to do this using Auto Paint. Once again, we'll switch the mode back into use and I've got it set to record. I'm going to use one of my custom brushes from the paint mode. I'm going to use Recursive Clone. In order to do this, I'm going to make a very small paintbrush, about this size, and I'm going to offset it using the control key against the uh, top of the helmet. So that's what we're going to clone from. And on the very first frame, I'm very going to quickly just draw up just the area I want to remove. So I'm not going to do it too cleanly, but you'll get the general idea. So there's more or less the logo that's been removed, and it's only been removed for one frame. I'm going to hit play, which will then commit down my stroke that's been recorded. Now one of the things that I need to just point out is if I was to change the zoom level at this point, the brush stroke will not be accurate because the size of the brush is actually dependent on the zoom mode. So the first tip I can give you is do not change the zoom mode once you start using the auto paint brush because the sizes of the brush will change because of the way that the zoom function works with the brushes. That's the first thing. The second thing is turning on the wireframe option. You can see that if I was to scroll through time, firstly obviously it's not moving, but you can see how the brush is going to draw its stroke over time. I would like that brush stroke to happen on every single frame. So we simply come to the second time bar and using the slider here I can then change the brush stroke to be, be drawn on every single frame. So you can see how that's now applying itself, it's constantly blue. The last thing we want to do is we need to make sure that that wireframe follows the helmet. And this is one of the nice things about the auto paint tool is it's the only place inside of paint where you've got access to the Autodesk stabilizer. 
So if we just go into the stabilizer very quickly, inside here we just choose the area which we wish to track. So I'm going to choose the corner of the logo that I'd like to track. We simply analyze this. So if you know your tracking ways, then this is a really easy thing to do. And then if I come out of the tracker by hitting return, you'll now see how that brush stroke is now tracked onto the helmet. Once I'm happy with all my settings and everything's set up, I simply hit process and then Smoke will then go through the whole process of actually painting this out. The same tools apply inside of Flame on Flame's desktop paint. The modules are absolutely identical and you can see how it's now going through every single frame, removing that section. The one thing to point out is because we are recursively cloning every single frame, things like the grain, the texture, maybe even there's a change or shift in highlights, all of those are actually being preserved because the clone stroke is coming from the frame that it's updating from. So it's not cloning from a previous frame or a still frame, it's cloning from a moving frame the entire time, which allows us to get more accurate strokes. If I just stop this process and I just scroll back, you can see straight away how we've now removed this out. And if I just zoom out to its original size, you can see how we've now removed that logo out of the shot. You can see how it comes back in. And if I hit process, my auto paint stroke would continue from then onwards. Hopefully this has just given you a little bit of an idea of how you can use auto paint. There are a few more little tips and tricks that I'm going to share in some future blogs, but this will definitely be a really good tool for you to play around with. And it's very fun and creative. Take care. See you next time.